Alright guys, this has been a very long time coming. It's been a long time since I was able to do a video. As you see, a couple of different things. One, this is the shell of my new garage. And I'll have to do a video on that. But this is gonna be my home office slash garage. And uh, I'll have to do a separate video on kind of that progress. But it's been a long time coming. Um, here's the Jeep. I uh, finally got it back from the shop about a month ago. They had it for about another three weeks. Um, I have a, basically found out finally that I need the transmission to be rebuilt. And so there's a tiny leak coming from the transmission every once in a while. Um, the pump and everything's bad. So I'll just rebuild it after I get this building done and it'll be good to go because I've rebuilt basically everything on this thing. Um, <clears throat> last time at the shop, both axles got fully rebuilt, new gears, seals, everything, bearings. Um, I actually ended up uh, putting four tins in this thing, and then the front has lockers. I added e-lockers to it um, with my nice switch panel that I have started creating. Yeah, it's a little dark in here, but there's the uh, switch panel. There's the light. So there's my switch panel, and then over here is the uh, locker. So I just flipped that on. Uh, thing I wanted to show you guys right now that I'm working on, as you see, about everything is out of this thing. Just doing too many projects at once here on this thing. But, as you see, I took out these speakers, and I have a 3D printed panel that I made that I'm selling on my website um, to fit tweeters. So project today is, as you see, these are factory tweeters that come in the uh, Infinity sound system. And obviously, not only are they old, you know, they're not good for today's standards. So I was able to design a panel that sits inside the same, takes up the same exact space as these factory speakers. And you can fit a one inch or three quarter inch tweeter. Um, and I designed it for kicker. So the holes are 40 millimeter, 45 millimeter. And on this side, if you can see that, that's the 40 millimeter hole for a three quarter inch kicker tweeter. All right, so here's the two different kicker tweeters. This is the KS series, which I believe is next to the top of the line of kicker. Um, to me, for what this is, this is a trail rig, uh, slash kind of daily driver-ish, so Put out some nice sound. I'm gonna have a KS series six and a halves in the doors, um, but you can kind of see how these tweeters fit nice and snug in this panel. They don't go past the factory uh, size on this because if I hold up one of these, you can see they're basically the same size. Uh, this one fills it out a lot more. Obviously, this is a one-inch tweeter, um, so this is a much bigger. Um, with the mount here, we have to break off these little tabs and then this sits flush. This is perfect inside that void, no problem. So my project today is I'm gonna take, this is the massive uh, filter for the tweeters. And as you see, it has a very long tail. Obviously in that dash, one, we're not gonna, I don't know if we're gonna have that much room to store all this. So what I'm gonna do is cut this up here then cut it down here, and then solder them together and make it much shorter. Um, obviously, I'm gonna go in the vehicle and kind of dry fit it, kind of see where I wanna mount it to make sure I leave enough slack. And then same for this side. But what I'm actually gonna do on this side, since I have the factory tweeters with the plug for OEM, I'm actually gonna cut this because, I mean, I can't see any reason to keep this. Um, mine actually work, but I see no reason to keep these things. So I'm gonna cut it from the factory and then re-solder it onto this line. And then that way this plug fits factory into this. Um, and then I don't have to worry about cutting this, the car or anything like that. Um, and then this will just plug in play. So if I ever need to take it out, I can do that. So that's my project today. I was gonna video all this, put it up on my stand and go from there.
Well, here we go. Nice, shorter. Little filter here. So hopefully this will work great. Connect right up to the tweeters. Connect right into our dash. Tuck this away underneath. I'm just gonna do a uh, test of tape on it and go from there. Test the tape. Let's do it. No expert by any means. Or a pro. But I do what I can. To try to keep this stuff looking decent. And at least look like, you know, I took a little bit of time and care for it. Not perfect, but at least covered up, get it protected, and ready for install. I didn't do this because if I recall, this stuff's gonna get hot. I don't want to wrap tesla tape around that. Correct me if I'm wrong though. Because it would be nice to do one solid piece all the way down. Alright. Well. So there we go. So we should be able to connect this beauty into here and uh, installed in the dash and see how it sounds. All right. Look at there. Everything's mounted, mostly tucked away. <laughs> I think it looks good, nice and clean. Doesn't take up any more room than the factory. So I'm gonna put the panel back on. Here's the passenger side. Put the panel back on and uh, seal it back up. Finally get this Jeep back together. Here's my switch panels. Basically these are blank. These are hooked up to the uh, waterproof relay box. Ready to go. Cables ready to go. Um, I just, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet so I just leave the face plates off. As you can see, this is gonna be for my light bar on the roof and oh, my locker switch. And the light bar on the roof is gonna fit into these holes here and it'll be a 40 inch. And I'll just pop a hole, you know, probably back behind here somewhere, pop a hole, you know, waterproof it and everything. And then I'll be able to come down the inside um, and mount it all up. So that will be good to go. I'm ready to get that in there so I can do some more night riding. Did want to make a video on this. I see a lot of uh, questions on the boards about where we ran wires. And if you can see the blue line didn't get inside my wrapping, but over in here, back that way, there is a grommet deep in there and it's behind the washer reservoir I believe under the engine bay that you can remove and kind of push it out the way and pop the wires through there um, I had a fish tape that I was able to shove through there cut it with a little razor blade shove the fish tape through obviously I cut a really small hole just big enough to get my fish tape through then taped my wires to it and then just pulled through gently but I was able to feed it all through there everything I needed and if you look underneath the engine bay, it's uh, just, you know, it, it stretched big enough for the wires, which is nice. That way, you know, ideally it's still waterproof. Um, but yeah, everything came through there. And I was able to run everything behind my switch panel. Everything that I needed. And then if we keep going this way, maybe I'm crazy or, or however you want to put it, but I actually tapped into the Vic wire harness because it has an accessory wire that you know activates when the key is on and from there I connected a relay which pulled from one of the hard wired uh, fused power wires from underneath engine bay in my waterproof box and that feeds here so I have a nice basically dedicated line right from the battery 
that is activated when the car's on and turns this on. And as you see, I have, you know, I've uh, taped notes of what everything goes to. Um, USB charger, and I don't remember what this is, power for some things. And also grounds, which you see is grounded right here. And that way, you know, dedicated, solid, good power, good grounding. Um, you can see I kind of uh, even put a little protection on the metal here, so that way nothing was short out. You know, everything's tucked nicely in here. So I, ideally this just shouldn't ever damage or anything like that. You can see the ground wires come back through here. So yeah, I, I feel like it's a nice clean wiring system and then allows me a lot of expansion. So if I wanna run, you know, little LEDs or something inside the cab or anything like that, you know, I have dedicated fuse power um, obviously, you're not gonna run a light bar from this. That's gonna, you know, kill it. You know, there's a limit to the voltage from there, but it's a 30 amps from the uh, relay. So, you know, that's taken. The little USB take power is taking three amp or you know three volts or whatever it is. So you have to do that math. But you know, again, it's a good power for small LEDs and little miscellaneous accessories. But I just wanted to make a video on that because I don't think I've ever showed that and. A lot of people I see ask on the the boards. Um, you can see when I put my ends on, I also heat, sh heat shrink them so everything's nice and protected. So try to take the time and do it right and you'll never have to go back in here again.